Hi. The beauty of semi-modular synths is that with the help of a few modular friends, you can mess around with their internal structure to change their character, get fresh sounds out of them, and make them do things you didn't think they could. Many of the ideas that I'm about to show you in this video are applicable to other semi-modular synths, so stick around even if you don't have a matriarch. Quick note, you can and should pair your synth with drum machines, effects, or other synths, but this video will focus on what we can do to extend the core character and sonic behavior of Matriarch in this case, with a little help of a few Eurorack modules. The first important tip has nothing to do with sound. You may ask yourself what this unattractive DIY strip is, Matriarch has close to 20 Eurorack inputs and outputs on the back panel, which are critical for getting the most out of it, especially in a Eurorack context. The problem is that they're out of sight, which means that they're also out of mind. If you have a Matriarch, I highly recommend you have something around to remind you that these jacks exist and what they are. My solution is this strip. It's a simple template that I built, cut awkwardly and stuck on double-sided tape on my case. And I know that as long as these two modules are aligned, things will be where they should. There's a link to my Patreon where you can download this template or just make one yourself. I wish Moog would have labeled these jacks on the top panel until they or someone else comes up with a nicer solution. Hopefully this will help. Okay, let's start patching. A synth's sound starts with its oscillators and an easy way to give Matriarch a different West Coast style character is with a wave folder. I'm gonna use A through from Instro here and there are of course plenty of other options. Wave folders do have a couple of important limitations you should know about though, more on that in a bit. First, let's patch it in. Matriarch is a stereo synth from the filters on so we're not losing anything by taking a single mono cable and plugging it into the input of a through however if you're in stereo or parallel mode you'll need to patch the output into both filters if you're in series mode patching into vcf1 is enough you can split the output to two using the mult in the utilities or just by using a stack cable and then patching the output into the second input like this both inputs are regularly normaled to the mixer by connecting an external input into them, you disconnect them from the mixer. If you're gonna rewire your semi-modular synth, it's always a good idea to get yourself somewhat familiar with how it's routed internally and which connections get broken when you patch into them. Anyway, let's take a listen. Wave folders are a form of wave shaping or wave distortion that folds a waveform on itself, creating additional harmonics that have a unique character. Now remember before I mentioned two limitations of wave folders, the first is that they work better on waveforms with an angle. So either a triangle or a sawtooth. They're less effective on square and pulse waveforms. So stick to the angled waveforms. The second limitation or character trait you need to know about wave folders is that they fold, most of them do it, as you drive level into them. So if I start with a simple triangle waveform here, I can fold it just by increasing its level. Which can give unexpected results if you start layering oscillators or play in paraphonic mode. If you play every note on its own, it won't make much of a difference, but as you layer notes, the increased level will change the character of the wavefold. Like I said, either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on taste. So I think wavefolding works best on monophonic sounds, but you can experiment obviously with polyphony. One thing for sure, your matriarch doesn't sound like this out of the box. Okay, let's move on. If your matriarch is jealous of the sub 25 or sub 37's drive function, you can do something about it. You can put drive wherever you want in the signal chain, obviously, but I think the prime location for it is just after the filter so that you can push the resonance into the drive. If you only have a mono drive like this one, Obviously putting the drive after the filter means you've got to give up the stereo character of the filters. This only applies to stereo low pass, low pass modes. Doesn't matter if you're in parallel or series modes. This drive does have two inputs, so I can use that. 
despite the fact that it's not stereo. And if we want to patch this back into the signal chain, we need to override the VCA inputs. Again, a stack cable or the malt will work fine for this. So this is more or less the dry sound, but as we start to drive gain, totally change the character of the synth. Of course, adding the delay won't hurt either, which is why it's nice to patch the drive in the signal chain. And as you can hear, you can really transform Matriarch into quite something else. Another way to change the character of your semi-modular synth is to replace its oscillators or to augment them with an external source. With Matriarch, it's extra special if you find an external source that's stereo because of how beautifully the filters play off the harmonics in stereo. Now you actually don't have to resort to Eurorack sound sources for this. You can send MIDI out the MIDI output to a different synth or to an iPad and then bring in polyphonic audio back using the external input in the back. If you want to bring in stereo external audio, you're gonna to wanna to use the front panel patch points because the external input in the back isn't in stereo. For the purpose of this demo, I have the quite lovely ensemble oscillator from 4MS and it's in stereo, so you definitely wanna patch in both inputs. Now in this simple patch, I'm overriding the oscillators, which is obviously a waste. Let's take a listen to it first, then I'll show you how to bring in the internal oscillators alongside it. Now I still need to open up the VCA to hear it or just go into drone mode. And just let's take a listen to this for a bit. All this completely unfiltered for now. Anyway, that's the character of this oscillator bringing in any other external oscillator obviously can vastly change what this can do. To control the pitch of this module, you need to go from keyboard CV out, which is this output. You can feel your way around into pitch CV over here. So now we can play whatever is going on here. Now, if we wanted Matriarch's internal oscillators to pitch in, if you don't mind the pun, we would need to use a mixer. Luckily, we have two mixers here in the utilities modules, and we can keep it stereo if we use both. Again, split the output of the mixer to both of these. These are both mixers and splitters, by the way, or molts. And then patch the mixed signal back into VCF1 and back into VCF2. So now we can bring back our oscillators, tune them, or tune this to them. Anyway, a really nice way to create nice and layered sounds when you carefully balance the sounds of Matriarch with an external sound generator. This brings us nicely to the next pairing idea, which is to use Matriarch's modulators to affect external modules. This can be anything from keyboard velocity or aftertouch to either of the two LFOs or even the mod wheel. So let's say, for example, connect the mod wheel out, which as I feel my way around here, using this handy index is right over here. Patch that into root, just made it. Now don't forget the mod wheel controls other things based on these three knobs, but let's just put mod depth to zero on all three. Then we can just play a note and... Use the mod wheel to control the root parameter in this case. Like I mentioned, we could have changed the timbre of this module using any of the mod sources here, envelopes, LFOs, and so on. Okay, let's clear this out and move on to the next one. Next up, if you've ever been unhappy with Moog's filter losing bass when you crank up resonance, there might be a workaround for you. So first let's listen to this for a second. Let's play this pattern. Notice as I crank up resonance, we lose out on the bass. 
which comes back if we bring resonance down. Well, I thought as long as I have this EQ module around, why not give this a shot? I'll patch VCF2 out into the input of this EQ. This is the low end EQ, the base shelf. And then you know the drill, patch the output into both VCAs. Now this EQ also has boost and saturation, so it's not gonna sound exactly the same, but let's give it a shot. So as I increase resonance, I'll boost bass. But most of the drop is just when you get started, so you need to compensate a lot to begin with. Again, not perfect, but if you've got a module like this around the house, you can even get a bass boost with it. This particular EQ, by the way, is voltage controlled. So if we wanted keyboard tracking for the EQ, we could do that as well by patching the keyboard CV out to this input. Next up is voltage controlled MIDI control. Now I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but the fact is that there are certain critical parameters in Matriarch and maybe in your synth that can only be accessed or modulated using MIDI CC messages. So for example, in the case of Matriarch, gate length is something that you can only control with an external MIDI parameter. as well as arpeggiator swing, which we don't want to do in this case, and the noise filter. So if I take this down, take down the delay, bring up noise. So it turns out that Matriarch has a built-in filter for its noise. In case it's too bottom endy, it has a high pass filter, which I think is really useful. And you only have access to this through MIDI CCs or through a series of button presses using the global settings. But MIDI CCs is a much better way to do it. Beyond that, there are parameters that you can access on the panel, like say octave changes or delay spacing, but you don't have an input to modulate those parameters on the panel. You can, however, modulate them using MIDI CC, which means that if you have a module like Bifaco's VCMC, you can send control voltages into these faders, so to speak, to control MIDI CC parameters or parameters inside Matriarch. I've already shown how you can use control voltage to change CC values to modulate, say for example, the spacing parameter in my Matriarch versus Grandmother video with an envelope generator like Maths. Let me show you an excerpt of that video now. So in this case, I have gate from Matriarch triggering an envelope in Maths, and then I'll take the output of that envelope and plug it into input number five, VC input number five, which in the case of VCMC, translates that to the MIDI CC that controls delay spacing. So now check it, when I press a key, right, you might be able to see this here, there's a little envelope that triggers, and that changes the spacing, which makes that cool sound. Now I could of course change the attack, or decay of this envelope. Okay, let's move on. Another nice idea you might want to try is to decouple the triggering of the filter envelope from the amp envelope. By default, both envelopes are triggered together, destined to follow the same rhythm based on the notes you play or the sequencer or arpeggiator, but you could use an external trigger sequencer to trigger either envelope if you wanted. I could use the internal clock for this. In this case, I'll just use Pam's workout, hook that up to the clock of dot from DNI Pro. This is a Euclidean sequencer. Then if I say take the output of lane one here, there are three lanes in here, and patch it into the trigger input of the filter, I've basically disconnected the filter envelope. If I take this out, you can hear this is the filter envelope. Put that back in. It's disabled. It's waiting for a trigger from this module. So if I get clock going, you can see this triggers the envelope. And to make it rhythmically interesting, I think this is a really interesting way to spice up the rhythmic character of Matriarch. Another 
Another interesting pairing you might want to try is any one of the numerous generative or interesting Eurorack sequencers out there. The built-in sequencer and arpeggiator in Matriarch are nice, but like most semi-modular sequencers, they're pretty simple and straightforward. They play back whatever's fed into them. There are plenty of interesting Eurorack sequencers like Rene from Make Noise or Turing Machine from Music Thing Modular, where things can get pretty hectic. There is a mini Turing machine or shift register random CV generator inside Disting or Disting EX. Let's try that out. I'm going to clock it using the clock out of the matriarch because I want it to be in sync with a sequencer or arpeggiator. And you get pretty good at feeling your way around these with time. But the important thing is to know that they're there and where they are. Anyway, let's patch this into the clock of my shift register module. Now you could then use the control voltage generated by these sequencers to control any one or all of the oscillators in Matriarch. It is important to note that all of the oscillators will transpose any sequence sent to any individual oscillator based on the keyboard, which could be a nice effect as well, or you could just give up keyboard control and sequence all the oscillators externally if you like. Anyway, in this case, let's maybe just control oscillator three, go into pitch in. So I hope you'll forgive me if I don't turn this into a full-blown Turing machine tutorial. The way they work is pretty simple. I'll keep coming up with random notes until you freeze a pattern. And you can see if you like it, you can keep it or roll the dice again. And you can do whatever you want with that pattern in this case. Transpose it or add an effect to it. And the nice thing is that because it's clocked through Matriarch, the delay is in sync. Anyway, a nice way to again breathe new life into Matriarch by bringing in interesting external sequencers. Okay, so that's it for the pairing ideas I'll demonstrate in this video. However, there are obviously plenty more options. For example, you might wanna try out replacing the ADSR envelope with a complex rhythmic envelope sent over to the VCAs by a DC coupled sample player. I've made a whole video about that. I'll link to it below or try out any other of the many ideas in my ever expanding book available to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful, ring the bell after subscribing if you don't wanna miss the next one. Thanks for watching.